thank you very much. And first of all, congratulations for presenting this study. We see a lot of things uh, that people talk about, but nobody does a real randomized trial uh, testing this. We've been using rotoblader and cutting balloons and, uh, and and sea balloons for a long time. So please give us the background why you thought this study was necessary. So very good point. So one, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, thank you very much again for this uh, interview. And um, the, the concept uh, was, we always have been using a small rotobar uh, in many cases, knowing that the bigger rotobar has a more complication. And this is actually predate uh, IVL. Now we have the IVL when we combine rotablation with IVL. But before that, we using the small rotobar in many of the cases and then combine with a cutting balloon. Uh, with the idea is that those atherectomy and atherotomy will do a little more cuts uh, <clears throat> in the calcific nodules and calcific and will give a better stent expansion. So that was a clinical concept, which had been going on for so many, for so long. And, uh, but, the you know, it was like feeling uh, that, yeah, it makes sense rather than just going with the high pressure balloon dilatation. And we felt that let's put it to the randomized trial. So the concept behind was the common, uh, common uh, practice put to the task of the randomized. And actually, uh, since it was the investigator initiated study, and more importantly, cutting balloon is not approved for severely calcific lesions, we had a tough time to get it through FDA. It took us about 12 months, 12 months to answer various questions of our FDA that is it safe to do cutting mm -hmm. balloon one in the severely calcific lesion? Because you know, you if you see the product uh, insert, it's only approved for mild to moderate calcified lesion. No, and but we felt that if you are doing it, you had to do a moderate, moderate mm -hmm. to severe, severe calcium. And second was that what is the uh, the data between rotational atherectomy and cutting balloon that it is safe. So the, multiple answers. There are some publications, non-randomized, but finally FDA gave us the nod. Okay, you could do it. But just to say, to get to that 12 months uh, took to answer. And then uh, then uh, at the part, Boston Scientific said that once this looks safe, we want to get a product uh, label that cutting balloon can be used for severely calcified lesion. And this sure. will be the next part because they wanted to get uh, something out of it uh, that with the trial. Uh, and so so that's, you know, led to uh, after the FDA uh, strict uh, multiple, you know, if uh, Roxana Maran, who is the, the the trial, you know, organizer, papers like this much, I would say at least six inches, seven inches high, mm -hmm. so much communication. Uh, but what? finally, they we actually got on the phone. It's not only that, from the device safety committee of the FDA, we had to get on the phone. And then we showed the data, how we use it, percentage, we showed Mount Sinai data, I said, no trouble. So then finally they agreed. So that was a big hitch. But anyway, the concept basically was that if you combine two, would you get a better lumen? And yeah. select in a randomized way. And best way is to do either OCT or IVAS. And uh, we thought that IVAS is a very good parameter, uh, to, you know, the, the tool to answer that question, that if there is the minimum stent area after rotablation, either you do a cutting balloon versus high pressure, non-compliant uh, high pressure balloon, that cutting balloon may should uh, hypothesis wise may give you mm -hmm. better uh, lumen in terms of better minimum stent area. So that basically was the primary endpoint and secondary endpoint everywhere the stent expansion, dissections, and you know those things. And it turns out to be that despite rigorously we did this sixty patients and blinded the <coughs> interventionists did not know the final I was run that what I was was so the, the, clearly the last I was run which was the uh, which was evaluated for the primary endpoint, we did not know what it was. We knew before, we knew after the atherectomy or atherotomy, and then before stenting, but the final run was done blinded to the investigator. So that's another point. So totally no and um, no bias. So it means investigator may say, you know what, stent is not good, expanded, maybe I'll go a little more further. No, you are done from your side, angiographic, and then the final IVAS run was done. And it turns out to be both were about 5.7, 5.6 uh, range, and they were non-significant. The one thing which we found was that by doing this strategy, so main uh, primary endpoint, the minimum stent area was not different between two strategies, but we yeah, found stent expansion. Yeah. So the, that was the primary endpoint. The second was the stent expansion. 
Stent expansion is basically your stent area uh, divided by the mean of the proximal and distal reference. Uh, and that's the stent expansion, which should be 80%. And we found the stent expansion was definitely better in the cutting balloon and rota group compared to non-compliant uh, uh, and rota group. And also the cutting balloon caused more calcium fractures. So on the, we was able to see like 20% versus 50% nodular yes. you know, the fracture in the calcium. So softer endpoints, uh, or so you can call si secondary endpoint, whether they really matter on a long run, we don't know, but uh, this need to be evaluated. But those were in favor of cutting balloon, but the primary endpoint we lost. And one of the big thing, which also trial said, the 60 patient, we had three complications. You can imagine these are the lesion complex, 30 plus millimeter lesions, mm -hmm. the the moderate to severe severe calcium in 75, moderate calcium in 25. So clearly, uh, three fourths is the severe calcium mm -hmm. old tram track, and we have only three complications of the CKMB. There's no other. But that's but that's the highly highly experienced operators. That is correct. Uh, yeah, the that entire author list are some of the most experienced operators. Yeah. The Mount Sinai and Saint Francis. Uh, you guys have been doing rotobladers, what, 30 years, 40 years? So <laughs> it's amazing. Congratulations. So just but to I say, have... the device was safe. The strategy was feasible. No complication, but it need to be evaluated in a more uh, further manner. The pilot only gave, it, I would say that, you know, many times they do like uh, the, you know, phase one, phase two trial. This was kind of phase two trial, safety, just to make sure that it was safe. So strategy was safe. Now, uh, Dr. Ahmed, you can ask me. Sure. I have a question that's not really the trial, but you've been, the, it's mainly about calcium since it's about calcium. You've been around since the advent of angioplasty, even before the stents came in. Why are we seeing so much calcium now that we never saw? Point. Is Beautiful. it vitamin D and calcium that the people are taking? Yeah. So that's a very good point of why we are seeing more calcium. Yeah. Now, we know imaging will give you more calcium, but angiographically, we are seeing more calcium. Yeah. Uh, and the one of the I I would say two two factors. The clearly the age of the patients is going. The lifespan has increased. Uh, used to be 68, 72. Now uh, female is 82 in America and 79 for the male. Uh, average lifespan. So I think this is a disease for the older age. Uh, and uh, and then second point which I think is that our use of statin. So I think the statins make the plaque uh, more stable and that because calcium because no longer soft now something has to take that space of the fat and that is the calcium so there are some data which have shown that while uh, the calcium increases when patient takes statins so wow. yeah so age if i had to say two and, and sorry my one more clear diabetic diabetes 20 years ago was 22 percent now it's 45 percent in our trial was 44 percent so I think this combination of three, older age, diabetes, and statin use, which cause more calcium, we are seeing more calcium at present compared to what it used to be before. So a follow-up to that, now that we see more calcium, we have things, what do you think the impact now, based on your cutting balloon or non-compliant balloon, will be impact now that we have shockwave and OPN balloons in US? How would yeah. that affect yeah. how we will prepare these lesions? So I think the algorithm is a, a, it's very clear that once you have a calcific lesion, and that's what the, I answered the last question of one of the uh, invest, you know, the, the panelists who asked me that uh, sky that you know any calcium uh, you can do a balloon. If balloon doesn't work, then you you can go to the atherectomy and other approaches. I say that once you have identified, if you have done the imaging, and you identify it's a high calcium score, uh, four five on OCT and IVAS or uh, the, the thick calcium, uh, if you have severe calcium on angiogram and uh, confirmed by uh, imaging, balloon alone, we know failure rate will be almost 60-70%. Now you're talking about the bailout device. So bailout device, in that case, if we know that your ultimately your IVL will make it, then it's okay. But we know many of cases IVL will not make the turn, will not go through the long lesion. So therefore, in those calcific lesions, I would say a severely calcified algorithm should be use a small bar uh, and 1.25 or 1.5, then followed by a cutting balloon, 
uh, and I would say could be even high pressure non-compliant balloon. And if it does not yield, then you use IVL. Now, one of the region I would say the IVL I'm using as a secondary device is region is the cost difference. So financially, if your outcome remains the same, there are no study have shown that IVL has lower restenosis or lower mace rate. And so it just basically, it has low acute complication and opens the lesion very well. All the disrupt CAD trial and so have shown. So if that is the case, why would you use a $4,500 device compared to you can get that done in 1800, which is the rotablation or 800, which is a cutting balloon. So therefore my, the, at the same time, if you have large vessel, 3.5, uh, 3.25, 3.5, uh, 4 millimeter vessel, and it is uh, not a subtotal lesion, 80% lesion in the proximal to mid vessel, want to go directly with uh, the IVL is completely fine in that case. But don't try the regular balloon. Balloon may give you a little space to get IVL, but otherwise the plan there is using the IVL. So strategy has to be severely calcified. You have, you are committed for either atherectomy or IVL, if the moderate to severe calcium or moderate calcium, trying the balloon angioplasty is good enough. If opens up fine, and then you otherwise, in some cases, whatever 10, 16% of cases, you can upgrade uh, to that new device. And that actually have been shown, uh, Rotexas and Prepare Cal. Two trials done by the, those investigators as four years apart, about 400 cases. They found that in the moderate to severely calcified lesion, when you did a balloon alone, but they define they defined that overall was 16% failure rate. Now, if you take a severe calcium, the failure rate was 60%. And moderate calcium, failure rate was 6%. So clearly the severe, and we know once you have a bailout of this device, outcomes are not as good. So key is the algorithm need to be made. I know that we keep everybody keep writing the algorithm. We actually have our paper is under um, review. Uh, about we have made our, our our algorithm also, but we are saying very clear: if you identify severe calcium, you are committed to either atherectomy or IVL. Mm -hmm. Rest you can do, and then if doesn't work, then you can do uh, bailout uh, atherectomy or uh, strategy. Thank you very much. That was amazing. Um, so uh, thank you very much for your time. What would be your final thoughts before we close this? So uh, the uh, I would say that. Rota cut trial adds to the under, understanding in the literature about uh, using combined strategy in management of this calcific lesion that it is safe, but not associated with better lumen. Uh, and large trial will be needed to answer the question that does it have any impact on the clinical outcomes? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.